Hey, Mina. Hope you're doing well. What's your plans for this weekend? Oh, hello, Anna. I'm doing good. I don't have that much planned for this weekend. The only thing I have planned is to go and get coffee with Kyla and a couple other friends. That sounds like a lot of fun. Would it be okay if I joined you guys for that? Wait, what? I don't have any plans for this weekend. It would be really boring if I stayed home doing nothing all weekend. That's why I'd love to get coffee with you guys. Well, I guess that would be fine with us. You can come if you really want. Though, I don't think you paid for yourself last time you came out to eat with us. Kyla paid for you, right? I feel like this happens pretty often with you. You never seem to bring any money with you. Oh yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sure that I would remember to bring my money if I was invited from the very start. The last time I went out to eat with you guys was very last minute. That's why I thought one of you guys would be willing to treat me to dinner. I don't really understand your logic. Why would one of us have to pay for you just because you decided to come last minute? You should pay for the food and drinks that you order. Isn't that a pretty obvious thing to do? You're being pretty annoying about this. Are you trying to say that what I did was wrong? I'm just saying that you should pay for yourself if you're coming out with us. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, where are we planning to go this weekend to get coffee? Would you be able to come and pick me up? You're asking me to pick you up again? You have your own car, right? Why don't you just drive yourself? If you don't want to drive, you can just ask your husband for a lift. It would be nice if you could just get to the cafe yourself. Your house is in the opposite direction for me. I don't want to have to take a huge detour to pick you up. Why are you being like this? I think it would be more fun if we went together. We can have so many conversations on the way. It's only like a 30 minute drive to the cafe. Please just drive yourself. It would take me an extra 20 minutes if I came to pick you up. It's only an extra 20 minutes. I don't understand why you're being so difficult. You really are so selfish. I don't understand why you won't just drive yourself. I don't want to use my car because it would cost me money. That's the reason you don't want to drive? I'd have to pay for gas and parking if I drove myself. I don't want to waste my money like that. That's why I'm asking you to come and pick me up. It's only a small detour for you. I really don't understand why you're being so hesitant. Come and pick me up. It'll be like a mini road trip. Sorry, but I don't want to take a detour. I also want to go straight home once this gathering is over. I'm asking my husband to look after the children, so I don't want to leave him waiting for too long. I don't care. I've decided that you're going to come and pick me up. Thanks so much. Tell me once you guys decide on the time. Would you please listen to what I'm saying? I'll make sure that I'm prepared this time. I'll try not to forget my purse this time. I hope that I don't forget. Hope? You better not forget. You better come and pick me up. Okay, fine. I'll come and pick you up. Please don't assume that I'll come and pick you up every single time, though. This is a one-time thing. Okay, fine. I'll try not to ask you for a lift in the future. Goodbye. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Anna! I've had enough of this! When are you going to pay me back? I'm getting tired of waiting. What are you talking about? It's not just me. All our mom friends are wondering when you're going to start paying us back. You always borrow money from one of us when we go out to eat or do activities. You always say that you'll pay us back. None of us have received any money back from you yet. So that's what this is about. I'll pay you all back the next time my husband gets his paycheck. If this continues, we're not going to invite you out with us anymore. Stop being so dramatic. Anyway, where are you guys planning to go next? Are you listening to anything that I just said to you? I heard that Kyla was planning a short vacation with the group. She didn't tell me the details of the trip when I asked her about it. I don't understand why she didn't tell me anything. 
I think it's pretty obvious why she didn't tell you the details. Where are you guys planning to go for the short vacation? Please tell me. Don't be so selfish. We're planning to go to Brazil for a few days. What? You guys are planning on going abroad? I'm surprised to hear that. We've been planning this as a group for a while. Why haven't any of you invited me then? I'm planning to go either way though. Wait, what? Why are you sounding surprised? Of course I'm going to go. I'm not going to forgive you guys if you leave me out of this trip. I'm sorry, but you can't come. The three of us have already planned out this trip. We've already made all the reservations and paid for it all. It won't be possible for you to come with us this time. Okay, fine. I'll just meet you guys in Brazil then. Wait, what? Are you sure you can get there by yourself? The flight there is actually pretty long from the US. It'll be fine. I've been abroad many times in my life before. Would you be able to make an extra reservation for the hotel you guys are staying at though? We booked the hotel with a package deal including the flight. I'm not sure if we can add you just for the hotel reservation. Could you send me the details of the trip? I need to know which flight you guys are getting on what day. I am definitely going with you guys on this trip. Are you serious about this? I thought you didn't have the money to pay us all back right now. Where are you planning to get the money to go on a trip abroad? I'll figure it out. It's none of your business. Anyway, make sure that you send me the details. I'm so excited for this trip already. I can't wait. Let's all have fun on this trip together. I guess I'll send you the details for this trip later then. We're still planning out this trip though, so nothing is confirmed. All our reservations can still be canceled. We all have children, so we book cancelable reservations just in case of emergencies. Even if you come, you won't be able to come with us for all the activities, by the way. Are you really sure that you still want to be coming? You can always come with us on future trips that we all plan together. I have no idea what you're suggesting. Just send me the trip details. I'll book my flight ticket myself. All I need you to do is book myself a room at the same hotel as you guys. Actually, I guess I can just sleep with you in your hotel room. I'm not sure if the hotel would allow you to do that. I'll send you the trip details if you're really serious about this. Also, let me tell you this one more time. This trip isn't 100% confirmed yet. I'm looking forward to it so much. I'm going to start packing for the trip already. By the way, I'm going to need you to pay for my hotel reservation. I am definitely not going to be paying for your hotel. I also don't know if you're even going to be able to book the same hotel as us. It might be full already. If you're serious about joining us, you're going to have to reserve everything yourself. Don't depend on us to do it for you. You always say that. I know that you're going to make the reservations for me. I've got to get going now. Make sure that you send me the details. Goodbye. Are you reading any of my text messages? I've been trying to get in contact with you from yesterday. I just arrived. I'm sorry that I didn't get back to you. I was a little busy. You just arrived? Where did you go to? You should still reply to me even if you're busy. I should take priority. Are you guys at the hotel already? Would you come and pick me up? What are you talking about? Stop trying to act like you don't know what's going on. I thought that you guys were going to come and pick me up. Pick you up from where? I have no idea what you're talking about. Why don't you understand me? Did you hit your head or something? I'm sorry, but I'm completely lost. I'm telling you that I just arrived at the airport in Brazil. I am at Terminal 1 of Sao Paulo International. When are you going to come and pick me up? Wait, what? No way. Just answer my question. I want to hurry up and meet up with you guys. I haven't been to South America before in my life. I'm a little scared, so hurry up and come pick me up. Why are you in Brazil? We canceled our trip there. I won't be able to come and pick you up. Wait, what? What are you doing in Brazil? 
Please stop making jokes like that. It's not even funny. <laughs> you had me scared for a little moment. You guys didn't really cancel the trip, did you? Enough with the jokes. Hurry up and come pick me up. I'm sorry, but that's not going to be possible. None of us are in Brazil. I don't get it. Where are you guys then? We're all still back home in California. Kyla had something important this morning, so we canceled our Brazil trip. We decided that we would just go to Los Angeles instead. We're planning to leave this afternoon. Wait, what? You guys are going to Los Angeles instead? Yeah, we all just met up right now. We're going to drive there together. I'm sorry, but I don't understand what's happening. This is some kind of prank, right? Please just come and get me from the airport. This isn't a prank at all. Everything that I just told you is the truth. We decided that we would take our families with us as well. Our three families are all heading to Los Angeles right now. The children seem to be very happy to be taking a short vacation like this. Why didn't you invite me? You should have told me that you guys canceled the Brazil trip. I don't understand why you didn't tell me. Why should I have told you? We didn't invite you on the trip in the first place. I didn't even know that you had actually booked a flight ticket there either. You probably should have told one of us directly if you really intended on coming with us. I thought I told you that I was coming. Do you not remember what I told you? I thought that I told you that nothing was confirmed yet. I guess you didn't listen to me at all. I can't believe that you decided to book a flight ticket after I warned you about it so many times. It's actually kind of funny how dumb you are. So, you're telling me this really isn't a joke or a prank? Am I really here all by myself? You guys are all still back in the US? Yeah, that's what I've been telling you. Do you want me to send you a photo for proof? It's okay, I believe you now. What am I meant to do, though? This is the first time I've come to South America. I don't even speak Spanish. I have no idea where any of the hotels are either. What am I supposed to do? They speak Portuguese. I don't know why you're telling me this. I won't be able to help. Did you even book a hotel for yourself to stay at? Wait, what? Didn't you reserve the hotel for me? Why are you asking me that? I thought I told you very clearly that I wouldn't be booking a hotel room for you. Do you not listen to what other people say to you? Why are you being so mean to me? Please, just help me out. I'm getting really worried now. Please just come and pick me up from the airport. I'm not being mean to you at all. I'm just telling you the reality of the situation you're currently in. I'm kind of surprised you even managed to get to Brazil by yourself. You paid for the flight ticket yourself, right? I secretly used my husband's credit card. He doesn't know about it. I was planning to ask you for the money for my flight ticket anyway. I'm just going to pretend that I didn't hear that. If you managed to book the flight yourself, you should have been able to book the hotel room yourself as well. I thought I sent you all the details for the trip. Well, that's because I thought that you were going to book the hotel room for me. I told you that I wouldn't do that. You were only asking me to book the hotel because you didn't want to pay for it yourself, right? Well, that's one of the reasons why. Your intentions are so obvious these days. All of us are tired of you borrowing money from us. You probably have no intention of paying us back anyway. Don't think that we're going to let you get away with this. You're going to have to pay us all back the full amount you stole from us. I didn't steal it from you. Stop being so dramatic. I'm your friend. I was just borrowing a little bit of money. No big deal. Actually, it's not a little bit of money. The total amount of money that you've borrowed from all of us is very large. It's not an amount that can be ignored anymore. We're not going to wait any longer. Okay, I'm really sorry about that. I promise that I'll pay you all back eventually. Would you please just help me get out of the situation that I'm in right now? I have no idea what to do. I don't even have a place to stay tonight. I don't have any idea how to leave this airport either. I don't speak any Portuguese either. I'm sure people will understand you even if you speak in English. Go and ask one of the airport workers for help. Stop asking me for help. This has nothing to do with me. I also want to ask you to avoid hanging out with us in the future. 
All our other friends don't really like you either. I would advise you to distance yourself from everyone for a while. Is that really true? I thought I was popular. I thought that everyone liked me. I have no idea why you thought that. I want you to pay us all back as soon as you come back home. I hope you enjoy your solo vacation in Brazil then. Anna tried to call Mina multiple times to ask for some help. However, Mina did not pick up the phone a single time. She chose to ignore Anna completely as she was enjoying her vacation in Los Angeles. Anna was unable to even leave the airport as she couldn't ask anybody else for help. She decided to sleep at the airport and went back home the very next day. Once Anna returned home, she noticed that she was being avoided by all her friends. Her husband also found out that she had used his credit card to book the flight tickets. He got very mad at her and demanded that she pay him back. Anna had to start working a part-time job so that she could pay her husband and all her friends back. Hello, Mia. I just got off the phone with Dan and he's told me about your visit to the oncologist. I hear you got your results back today. Finally! Why do they make us wait so long? It's certainly breast cancer, then. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Yes, hi, Susan. Sorry to keep you worrying in the dark. We ourselves just got the results back today. It's definitely cancer, but they told me it was early stages. It's going to be okay. I'm going to fight this hard and for as long as it takes until I'm cancer-free. I'm sure you will. You are nothing but persistent. But that is not what I'm concerned about at the moment. What I'm concerned about are my own flesh and blood. My son and grandbaby Kevin. What will they do now? Having a sick person in the house at all casts quite a shadow on everything. I can't imagine the housework getting done in a timely manner now, huh? What will you do about the cooking and the cleaning and the washing? Who's going to take care of Dan and Kevin while you're sick? Are you planning on making your boys do all the work around the house? Just because you were selfish enough to go and get sick? Surely there are some things you could have done to prevent this cancer. I heard about healthy eating guide apps and exercise videos all the time. Why didn't you start one of those things? I'm sorry, Susan, but it's hard for me to do anything because I'm in so much pain. Dan has always helped me out around the house as much as he could, so it won't be too much of an adjustment. Kevin is too young to help out, but he's such a good boy. I'm sure Dan can handle Kevin on his own for a while. This is absurd. A man doing a woman's job. My son having to do a wife's job. That is absolutely unacceptable. I will not let you degrade my only son like that. How dare you even think it? Who do you think you are? I knew this was going to happen. I just knew it. I've told you countless times you should have breastfed Kevin. It's a wonder how you never managed to read a single book on the benefits of breastfeeding while you were pregnant. I knew something like this would happen. Now, do you see you should have listened to me? Now do you see your way was wrong? Susan, that is extremely unfair. I didn't refuse to breastfeed Kevin because I was lazy and didn't want to go through all that trouble. It wasn't like I wasn't planning on breastfeeding him until he was a year old at the least. I had every intention of it. I even tried pumping as much as I could, but I just wasn't producing enough milk. It's not like I had a choice. What else could I have done? Let Kevin starve? Should I have let you breastfeed him? I read about the benefits of breastfeeding, of course I did. But I also read that those benefits did not outweigh the stress the mother goes through to be pressured to do it. The doctor said formula was perfectly fine, even better in some cases where their mother doesn't make enough milk and there's a concern about nutrients. It's been four years since Kevin was born and you still manage to bug me about it every chance you get. Are you saying that no mother who has breastfed her baby should ever get breast cancer then? Is that what you're telling me, Susan? I don't know about other moms. I'm talking about you. You did go and catch the cancer germ when nobody else did. How dare you talk back to me like this? 
All I am saying is you probably brought this upon yourself when you could have easily prevented it. All you had to do was listen to me, but no, you were too arrogant to listen. So why should my son and grandbaby suffer for it now? And while we're at it, perhaps it's best for everybody if you didn't come to our Thanksgiving dinner next month. I don't want to risk you spreading your cancer on such a happy occasion. Stay home and lounge around like the lazy pig that you've become. Netflix and chill, as the young people say these days. Susan, that is very unfair. You must know you can't get cancer out of sheer willpower. It's not like I went out in the cold with wet hair or rubbed poison ivy all over myself. It doesn't work like that. How can you say these awful things to me? Oh, don't fret. Shouldn't you be ecstatic that I'm letting you stay home rather than make you come all the way and help prepare a feast for 30 people on Thanksgiving? Shouldn't you be thanking me for this? Yet I haven't heard a single thank you. Other in-laws could easily be telling you to attend such an important family gathering, whether you have cancer or not. Did you ever think about that? You have it so easy and comfortable, but you still have the audacity to find minuscule things to complain about. You should be ever so grateful you have a generous mother-in-law like me. Ask anyone. Yes, Susan. Thank you for being so tremendously considerate. I do appreciate not having to go to Thanksgiving and standing in front of the hot gas oven for hours on end. That's better, see? That wasn't so hard, now was it? But I do worry about the optics. What'll everyone think if they see me old and alone bustling around by myself to prepare the feast for everyone without your help? You should make some phone calls and let them know what's happening so they don't wonder. I don't know if that's necessary. I've already been pretty invisible during the actual dinner because of Kevin's weird schedule. I doubt anyone will even notice I'm not there this time. What, are you ashamed of your cancer? Is that it? Do you expect me to tell everyone about your predicament? No way I'm going around telling people I have a cancerous daughter-in-law, Missy, uh-uh. I am already embarrassed enough to have you as my daughter-in-law at all. My sisters all have such beautiful, successful daughters-in-law, and I'm stuck with you. I will not give them one more reason to pity me and laugh at me behind my back, no ma'am. Oh, I can't believe you're putting this much stress on me. I'm old and fragile. So close to all the holidays, too. This is going to make me sick, isn't it? I understand, Susan, but the person affected the most by my cancer is me. Yes, there is chemo and radiation and all that, but it's me that has to go through it all. I'm hoping for the best, but I still have to prepare for the worst. I don't expect you to root for me, but at least don't kick me any more than you already have when I am this down. Kick you when you're down. Is that how you twisted my words? I have said nothing but the truth. How dare you? Extreme, unwarranted sensitivity must be a side effect of your stupid cancer, huh? All I was saying is that the rest of us should not have to walk on eggshells just because you have cancer. How is that anything but the simple truth? Oh, my poor grandbaby. I can't bear to think he only has a mother like you to look up to. I know, of course. I'll take him in, right away. Yes, this is the best idea I've had all year. I shall go and pick him up from daycare today and have him stay with me for the foreseeable future. Isn't that wonderful? You're going to take my son away from me? Before my surgery has even been scheduled? Or before my doctor even decides which treatment plan will suit me the best? That is quite enough, Susan. I must put my foot down. You leave my son out of this. I understand you don't like me, but my son has nothing to do with your animosity towards me. Oh, please. Do you think this is out of my selfishness? Why would I volunteer to babysit for free? I'm thinking of what is best for my grandbaby. What kind of morbid mother would rather let her son watch her go through chemotherapy when she could just as easily shield him from it all? Did you ever stop to think about the trauma it might cause Kevin? To see his mother slowly diminish all tubed up in a hospital bed, fading away one clump of hair at a time. Why would you want your son to grow up seeing that when he could be staying with me, playing with his cousins, and enjoying his childhood like any other boy his age? All right, all right, fine. You have a point, Susan. I guess it wouldn't be the worst idea to have Kevin stay with you for a while. 
but Dan will pick him up on the weekend so they both know that isn't going to be permanent. Please explain it kindly to Kevin. He's only four. What are you talking about? Cancer isn't something you can expect to fully recover from. It's not like the common cold. What if you end up dying from it? What do you expect Kevin to do then? He shouldn't have to suffer a sudden loss of his mother. It's better to ease him into it slowly. What better way to say a slow goodbye than to have him come live with his granny? You are truly despicable, Susan. There really is no end to your horrible mouth, is there? What? What did you say to me? I said you are a despicable, awful human being. Are your eyes as rotten as your soul? I've let your snide comments towards me slide the past six years, all because you were the mother of my husband and I thought I owed you that much. Or at least I thought I could be the better person and not let you bring me down. I even let it slide when you made backhanded remarks about my blue collar parents and my freelance job. And now that I have cancer, and you already think I'm not long for this world, you want to take my son away from me for good? Where do you get off, Susan? What right do you have to be so cruel? You look down on my parents, but at least they had careers. What did you have? You have nothing. You have never been anything but a housewife your whole life. You pretend you're some hotshot matriarch because you are what? The oldest of your siblings? And because they all congregate at your house for the holidays? Because they coo and caw at everything you say when they visit? That's only because you live right next to the train station and have the biggest house. Nothing else, nothing more. How dare you mistake my patience for softness? You have no right to talk about my illness like I wanted it to happen. And you most certainly have no right to talk about what is best for my son. You are nothing but a rude, greedy, selfish, old hag. What in God's name? Are you completely out of your mind? How dare you speak to me like that? Have you lost your goddamn senses? Do you want to be kicked out of this family? Is that what you want? How dare you talk to me like that? I am your mother-in-law. Yeah? You want to kick me out of your precious family? Are you going to tell Dan to divorce me? Go right ahead. Who's stopping you, Susan? Divorce may have been a scary thing for someone like you, who knows nothing but to live leeching off their husband. But things are different for me. I have a job, I can call my own, and despite what you might falsely think of it, I can easily make $5,000 a month alone. That is more than enough to raise a child with and live quite comfortably. If I take into account the monthly family feasts I was forced to attend at your beck and call, I'm sure my salary will increase by at least 15%. So go ahead and tell Dan to kick me out because God knows he has no grounds to take Kevin with him and I will make sure I get custody. What good is a salary if all of it will have to go towards your hospital bills? Why do you think cancer is such a notorious disease? It leaves nothing but pain and debt even if you get to bounce back from it. I will not let my son or grandbaby be the ones to suffer for your mistakes. You're living in the past, Susan. Nobody goes into debt from having cancer anymore. My job gets me one of the best health insurance plans on the market. It alone should cover all my medical bills. It might even cover any transportation costs to and from the hospital. Besides, my cancer was caught at the earliest of stages, so there's a 98% chance of beating it. Hmm, well, isn't that just peachy? I guess I will allow Dan to take Kevin with him on the weekends. You are sorely mistaken if you think you can just show up and claim Kevin from his daycare. I am his mother and the only authorized guardian for pickup and drop off. They will not let Kevin go with Dan if he tried. If you try anything sketchy, the daycare will call me or the police depending on how they assess the situation. No, Susan, I will not let you take my son if it's the last thing I do. If I ever feel the need to leave him with someone else other than myself, I will leave him with my parents. They live farther away, but the trek is going to be well worth it. Now, I want you to leave me alone. I can't bear the thought of my parents' precious daughter being treated like a sinner by you. All I've done this whole time was to be a good wife to Dan and a great mother to Kevin. I don't deserve anything less than the utmost gratitude from you. 
Plus, talking to you feels like it might have progressed the cancer further. I hope you don't miss any of your treatments because I won't be reminding you. Excuse me. You might want to check your grammar there. You are clearly delirious from the cancer. You can't remember who's going through what. What are you even talking about? How am I supposed to leave you alone to look after Kevin if you can't even think straight? So, you really don't know yet then? I thought you should know as soon as possible so that you can decide what course of action to take. That's what I told them. But I guess your real daughters still haven't told you yet? At this point, I don't even know why they might be keeping you in the dark still. Unless they have a good reason for not wanting you to find out, that is. I wonder what that reason could possibly be. Personally, I would never keep something like this from my own mother. I want her to know as soon as possible, and I would reassure her that I will be there with her every step of the way. What are you going on about? Is this some sick joke? If you know something I don't know, spit it out right now. Do you remember you went in for a checkup last month? And the doctor said you needed a more detailed blood test because they found something in your MRI scans? Well, it turns out you have endometrial cancer. They really didn't tell you yet? Some daughters you have. I guess you wouldn't have known anyway. They said cancer progresses slower in older people. You may not have had any symptoms. You must be losing your brain cells to cancer. What is this nonsense? What are you playing at right now? I have cancer. Are you joking? That is not funny. Yes, unfortunately you do. It's your choice to choose chemotherapy or like you said about Kevin and me, slowly ease into it if you prefer. I can't imagine your daughters want you to choose treatment because if they did, they would have told you so already. Time is of the essence with these things. Maybe they're hoping that you just slowly fade away without ever knowing so that they can claim whatever inheritance they think is coming their way. Slowly fade away. How can you be so heartless? You may disagree with me at times, but I am still your mother-in-law. How can you so blatantly wish me dead? Oh, I thought we were all simply speaking the truth here. Isn't that what you said when you brought up the possibility that I may end up dying from my cancer? I do feel bad for you. You must be so disappointed to not be able to host any family dinners anymore. Wasn't that your one joy in life? To play hostess and have guests fawn over your house? What? What do you mean? You told me not to come near your house this Thanksgiving, lest I cast a dampening shadow on a festive occasion. Didn't you? Or did that rule only apply to who you wanted to apply? Basically, that only applied to me, then. You're such a hypocrite and a liar! That's enough chatter from you. I knew I shouldn't let you go on. Look at how you're trying to spin this around on me. I need you to go find me a doctor who can cure my cancer. I will not accept anything less than the best of the best in the field. Maybe look for a renowned professor who's also a doctor. Someone who has won a few awards, too. Me? No, I couldn't. I wouldn't want my dark shadow affecting or ruining your chances of survival. No. In fact, I don't think I'll ever talk to you again after today. In case it turns out I only do have so much time, I'd much rather not spend any second of it wasting it on you. You should take care of your own problems. Or you can try asking one of your children to help you with it. Either way, good luck and goodbye, Susan. After that enlightening conversation with my mother-in-law, I promptly blocked her number and haven't spoken to her seen her since. To this day, I still cannot believe the hurtful words she blazingly hurled at me and then tried to manipulate me and steal my only child away from me. As for my cancer, my doctor was able to successfully remove all the malignant tissue by way of surgery and a couple of radiation treatments. I've been cancer-free ever since and I'm focusing on keeping myself that way by doing light exercises and eating healthier. Kevin and Dan have been so supportive and helpful, both physically and emotionally. I don't think I could have gone through this journey without them. My freelance work has been piling up, so I've been spending my recovery time in the hospital to catch up. As for Susan, my mother-in-law, she insisted on getting her cancer surgically removed despite the fact that her age made her a poor candidate. 
Fortunately, the surgery did go pretty well, and she's now doing her best to recover. She must have done some self-reflecting while she was staying in the hospital, because she called Dan one day to tell him she'd love to come live with us. I don't know about that. I don't know if I can live under the same roof with Susan, let alone forgive her for the things she said and done to me. I don't want to be mean, but I also don't want to do something that I know will cause myself nothing but deep stress. What is the most important to me right now is to make up for any time I lost with Dan and Kevin while I was away going through radiation therapy. I'll think about Kevin seeing his granny later. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.